Do you want a nice energized passive from the shop? Click the first link in the description and use the code FORTUNE13 to get a 13.5% discount while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello my fellow misfortunates and welcome to Diamond 4 solo queue. We are again yeah on a Diamond 4 smurf so uh, I can showcase some builds that are not only fun to play but also quite competitive as you cannot just play anything in low diamond as you know but um today we're actually playing the best lethality build you can play right now which uh, it's not dark harvest it's also not um, arcane comet but it's conqueror so conqueror with um lethality provides misfortune with solutions to um, problems that her itemization gives her, because with that, with um, lethality, you need to go full lethality, because um, armor penetration doesn't stack additively, it stacks multiplicatively, um, because of how armor is calculated, right? So you need to get all the lethality items, which means you cannot get Bloodthirster without sacrificing a lot of damage, and... Um, also, you cannot get um, any attack speed item, really, so dealing with tanks can be difficult. And also, um, you want access to uh, shielding synergies because of her W, right? So the Conqueror page fixes all that, because you get Legend Bloodline and Overheal to dominate the late game with. And also, in extended teamfights, you get additional attack damage from Conqueror, which is, again, amplified by your uh, armor penetration. And also short burst, your trades get amped by a lot and all ins with your ult, because E plus R is already 4 conqueror stacks, which is, in the mid game, more than 300 gold worth of attack damage. It's not about the full stacks, it's not about the healing, it's all about the extra attack damage you can get. Okay, so we hit level 2 first, but I don't want to trade too aggressively. I'm more like looking for Q bounces. Uh, ooh, top lane is looking interesting. Nice. Oh, thanks, Janna. Uh, how did that help me? Wasn't there a minion? <laughs> it's okay. Also, I picked up Mana Flow Band. Um, it's obviously less attack damage than Absolute Focus. But... Ooh, this Senna has Oom. We can do nasty things to her. Uh, it's less attack damage, obviously, but... Um, more mana means you have more reliable ways to stack Conqueror. Since abilities are... Uh, account... For two stacks, right? Okay, I do need to flash this, it seems. I should have flashed before the knockup hit me. But I was still... I was still greeting. I was... I was trying to hold on to my flash. <clears throat> but yeah, now that we lost flash and we lost some HP, we need to be careful. We don't get early lifesteal with this, obviously. Legend Bloodline needs some time to kick in. You can get, like, double Dorans, but I wouldn't recommend it with this build. Doran stacking is way better for crit misfortune. And now I'm 1v2, so I can't do anything. I need to hug my tower. And even then I probably can only stay in experience range and not go for any last hits. It sucks, but it's how I need to play this game. Yeah, I cannot walk to experience range. It's not how it works. Okay. Yeah, I need to stay back. Can't do anything, I'm 1v2. Can't go for last hits either. Need to let all of them die. They can die for me potentially. I should have just retreated way earlier. The bad news is I lose all of this, right? 
Okay, so... I'm now behind probably more than one level. She will hit level 5 soon and I, I will just hit level 4. Because I lost like 20 minions to the tower. The Janna roam was extremely bad. Yo, if you have um, if you have a friend that plays support, show them this video and show them what happens to their AD carry if the support just randomly tries to wander off when um, you have no way of holding lane priority by yourself. That's exactly what happens. Just show it to them. I, I, I know I've been duo queuing with some of my real life friends and who support me. And I wish they would know the struggle. Yeah, she's about to hit level 5 off of this wave. Oh, well, actually, she didn't catch all that experience, too, because she was chasing me under my tier 2 tower. Elias coming. Alright. So now... Even with Janna, we can't do much. Yeah, they're level 5, as I've predicted. Pop potion. I desperately try to stay in experience range. It's not even about the last hits at this point. It's about the experience. But I get punished for picking up experience as well. Wave is pushing towards me, so I'm only losing like four or five additional minions. And then I can farm under tower again, I hope. Really like to ward the bush. Perfect. <clears throat> again, just walking up for guaranteed experience. I'm not touching the wave. With two long swords, you can farm it. Oh no! Oh no, Jenna! This looks very bad. Okay, we good. Alright, so I'm 20 CS behind, but at least we um, got some help from our jungler now. The most important um, thing in that situation is to not feed. Because if you feed, then you're so far behind that even the jungler can't help you anymore. Since he just risks getting double killed. I'm not pressing W here, I want to ult the wave for extra pressure. Okay, now I recall. <coughs> Holding the wave here um, gives me more breathing room as she needs to clear the wave. I hope I can get away. Nope. Okay. They burn summoners and ults, I burn summoners too, that's fine. They still need to deal with this wave. This is why ulting the wave is so good, because it does not allow them to get any pressure. Even if they delay my back, you see the wave is still under their tower, as I took one additional um, minion wave from them. And this means they won't be getting any platings. And this also means this wave is guaranteed to push towards me. Even if they had not touched this wave, the fact that it's on their side of the map means that the minions will advance towards my side of the map no matter what. So I can farm on the tower again. I'm obviously still massively behind. They, um, all I can try to do is not fall further behind, right?
Yeah, this is all due to Jenna's questionable macro decisions. Alright. Damn. But now we're even in levels, and I think we have item advantage. Maybe we should look for a fight. What thing's missing? We push as fast as possible. If they roam, I cannot react to it, because they can trap and kill me. Can't risk that. Okay, perfect. I can take platings, take away from my ulti. Oh, actually, we can potentially trap them behind their towers. Oh no, oh no, I'm rooted. Oh no. That was my bad. <coughs> I, should not have, I should not have tanked tower. That was greedy of me. Until the with a counter gank, that's actually terrible for us. They kill all three of us here. Again, that, um, yes, I got rooted by Yumi, but at the end of the day, the gank was just bad. We are behind, in, and, um, first of all, you should not gank a losing lane, and we are a losing red lane, but, um, if they are under our tower, we are strong, strong enough to fight, but we're not strong enough to fight under their tower, so the entire gank setup was doomed. I cannot get last hits here. Nice, good job. The problem with ganking when we are under our tower is I lose even more CS. So I'm kind of in a checkmate situation. Either I help them and give up CS, or I don't help them and uh, farm under tower, which is both bad. It's, it's like a lose-lose situation. Okay, resume to ult the wave. It's the only use I've, <laughs> I've, uh, I've gotten out of my ulti this game so far, just ult waves. But I... but. Really, this ulting the wave has netted me 20 extra CS in total. Which is more than one kill worth of gold. 15 CS is one kill in terms of gold. And it got me first tower because of all the additional tower pressure. So yeah, don't underestimate the power of ulting the wave. Sometimes you just have to do it. Okay, yeah, Ringo wants to start this. Alright. Not sure if I like this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if we get contested, we lose. Okay, good smite. Right. Yeah, we have numbers advantage, and they don't have a tower to go back to. Nice, yeah, perfect. So actually, me ulting the wave snowballed into that kill because they didn't have the safety of their tower. If you needed to, d to dive this, this could have been horribly wrong. Or this could have gone horribly wrong, rather. Alright, and with um, Conqueror you want to upgrade to... Um, you know... Berserker's Griefs as soon as you hit your first item. Since the additional attack speed and the movement speed allows you to uh, stack Conqueror more reliably. 
Actually, we need to go top lane. Jake is gone and bot tower is gone, which means um, this is our perfect interval to take top tower and also to pressure Rift Herald on my way. Make sure to stay with Cho'Gath so I can't get flanked. Okay, too late. Um, I'm not replacing control work right now. Alright, so we're only 10 CS behind Senna. Which is amazing. We don't need to ult the wave here because Shogath can help us wave clearing. Nice. We should really try to pressure Rift Herald. And losing mid tower is super bad, by the way. It opens up our entire jungle. This mid tower is worth more for them than both these outer towers are for us. Or maybe it's about the same worth. Because the thing is, um, mid tower is a huge source of vision. Provides valuable information as to whether you're invaded or not. We need to retake it as quickly as possible. Oh no. Right, at least she lives. Damn, people getting caught left and right. I need to flash away because I didn't quite track the cooldown of Ari's charm. But I had a feeling it might be back up again. And if I get charmed in this ally, I cannot dodge it left or right because of the tower. Uh, the collision. And... Yeah, I'm afraid of Ari's charm, buddy. <laughs> well, HP. That changes real quick if she hits that. Yeah, I needed to flash away there. But we, we were just overextended and being caught. That's the entire point. There's a ribbon. Nice, we can kill her. Perfect. No idea why she tried to fight me there. We have three versus one. Built in 10 seconds. But this Shogath is way tankier than I um, anticipated. <laughs> I shouldn't have wasted my ult earlier to save him because it wasn't necessary. He would have lived anyway. A dragon in 20 seconds. Yeah, still my ward, okay. I'd like to get vision here. Oh, good job, Renga. Oh my god, they're overextended. Yeah, we should start dragon. Three of them are dead. It's only the bot lane, and I still got my ulti. Nice. If you ever get Ocean Drake Soul, the game's instantly over. Ocean Drake is... Um, well, Ocean Soul is the only soul that effectively reads you win the game on the spot. <laughs> it's impossible to lose with it. I've never seen somebody lose with Ocean Soul before.
I'd like to go back here. I'd really like to go back here. Uh, maybe staying is okay because I have ult off cooldown. Yeah, your ulti is so st This was rank 1 ulti, not even rank 2 yet. Lethality ulti is so crazy. And just pressing Q plus ult is 4 conqueror stacks. So, so any ability plus ult is 4 stacks, right? Doesn't need to be E. And at level 11, that's more than long sort of extra attack damage you get for your ult. I guess I should run. Yeah. I need to spend gold so badly. <coughs> so if you get that Drake in three minutes, then we are golden. Doing Lord Dom's third item. I can't repeat this often enough. Lord Dominic's regards is more damage than any lethality item, even against targets with no additional armor when they hit level 9 because of base armor. It also penetrates base armor. Lord Doms is the single most damage, especially for lethality, because as I've explained earlier, um, armor penetration stacks multiplicatively, because armor stacks multiplicatively, right? Ah, bad ulti. But I can't walk up any further, I'm too low. Riven got a lot of damage on me. Nice. Was oh, still enough. This Rengar is just way too strong. Okay, now red buff plus ocean soul. Oh, not ocean, but plus ocean drake. Um, get me healthy. Also, this is with Dark Harvest lethality, you wouldn't have lifesteal. And, uh,. You would not have been able, you, especially without Ocean Drake, you would not be able to sustain through this. But thanks to Legend Bloodline, we have such a good mid game and objective control. Perfect. Going back here doesn't do much for me. I'd m much rather farm. How much do you need? 2,000, roughly? I just lost a lot of mana at Baron, but I can just chill for a little bit, farm with autos. I need to keep my distance from Ari because of ulti. That should be fine, right? Okay. I was moving there just in case. Awkward situation. Maybe I should have moved with bot lane or towards bot lane. Okay, nice. Yeah, Rengar is overfed at this point. We can grab Ocean Soul here and win the game on the spot. Get it. It's Ocean Soul. We could take an inhibitor, yes, maybe even two, but Ocean Soul is just worth more. <laughs> A 
All right, GG. Game's over. <laughs> He's pinging me because I didn't buy Bloodthirster despite being called Bloodthirster MF. I'm sorry, mate. Almost got my Lord Dominic's regards. Alright, let's go. You're just one E gets me back to full health thanks to Ocean Drake. Never mind, Ocean Drake broken. Not even close, baby. Take tower. Super free. With Ocean Drake, we can also dive very easily. Especially when Shogath tanks, he's unkillable with Ocean. Let's just take tower. Okay. Okay, now we can push in top lane and win the game. Or with Ocean Drake or with Ocean Soul, we can we can even base tower dive them now, it's no problem. Yeah, this Arya has given up, and rightfully so. So this was the best Lethality Misfortune build, but if you want to see the best Misfortune build, period, then click the link on your screen right there. A big thank you to all my Patreons and channel members. If you want to become a Patreon yourself, just go to patreon.com slash mfdb. But if you rather save your money, you can support me for free by clicking the like and the subscribe button.